Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, everyone. I want to play something before we get started. Here we go. I'm missing all the day. Just think about that. Wishing on a star. Most people have. They wish for things to happen in their life that was productive, you know? So I'm wishing on a star. A lot of the confusion that's going on in the world is following society and the masses. Yes, they're following society and the masses. And so um, people are in a state of confusion and they are naming themselves confused. And so Rose Royce made this song, um, I believe back in the 70s, I'm wishing on a star. And it takes me to um, Matthew where the wise men followed the star. And I wanna bring some understanding to help many of us that have been following something, even their intuition, um, their spirit, which is really the star within you. You've been following the star within you to get to the place that you dreamed of. So what happens is, is that you go through the walk of fame and shame, but many people, especially in Christianity, will not accept the fact that the walk of shame is what was called out from Jesus' life. And the most productive part of his life as we follow came up through betrayal. So when you're following the star, and for those that have been called, you know, whatever, God has said to you, for some, God has spoke to you and no one else has prophesied or spoke to you concerning what you're to do. Think about what I'm saying, but go back into that Bible and begin to look at it the way that you did it when you were hearing the scriptures from someone speaking. Let the scriptures become personal to you because as I take you into Luke 21 and 22, I'm going to read from 22, but you can read Luke 21 and Luke 22. You're going to get a lot of information if you open your mind, come out of the mindset that people have taught us. And so there is um, a lot of things happening astrologically that um, my people perish because they like knowledge. They like knowledge because they follow what others have said rather than following the star like the wise men did. And they didn't have a, a visible wise, I mean star. Um, we got to get that everything about spirit and the Bible is spiritual. That means that you got to go within to really get the information. So here, I'm going to start at Luke 22, because um, I'm going to put this here, new age and new era together that we're getting ready to walk into. For those that know about the solstice on the 21st, um, a lot of people in astrology have been talking and saying that this is a time of prayer. And it really is because Mercury is um, the energy and the North Node that we are releasing old situations over 18 to 30 something years ago, old situations. Some of us have been called to redo um, and change the patterns of our, our parents' lives. But guess what? We could never ever redo or make evolution in our families and change dynamics unless we went through the walk that they did because we have to experience that walk. That means that we have to experience what they went through, some of the things that they went through, especially if you're called and you were told by God that you have to change the family dynamics. So that's the, but here, when you follow the star within you, you can have guidance from outside um, individuals that you trust, but the number one thing that you're going to do is you want to trust what's within you. You got to get to that that point, like Jesus called Peter out. You know, oh thou of little faith. But did Jesus call a part of Himself out as well, 
when he was knowing that he had a vision that he had to go to the cross, his mission was to help people, but he would have to go to the cross for people in decades to come to be changed individuals and walk on this planet the way that he did. So let's look at 22 and one of Luke. It says, now the feast of the unleavened bread, which is a point that you want to write, write down because the unleavened bread um, drew nigh, which is called the Passover. The Passover is necessary to look at. I don't want to get into all of that, but you go back into the Old Testament and then you look at the way that the Jews, um, they um, celebrate. So the Passover is very necessary because um, even the Passover for the houses that were in, in prayer back in Numbers and so on, um, they were praying so that the blood would be there and their homes would be safe. You know, the other day I did a little discussion on family priorities because we got to get that picture. But when you're going through life and you've been called or you see dynamics in your families and problems, someone is going to have to be the role model and change it. We don't make ourselves that because I don't think that Jesus really made himself do that either. He was born to do it, right? So from the day that you're born, you have a destiny. And your destiny is to see that there's something wrong in your life, in the family. What is it that you were called to change? Now that's for each and every one of us. So um, moving on, Luke, 22 says, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. So they were plotting on Jesus. Now, if you put yourself in that position and you want to say, mm, have I ever been plotted on? Am I going through a um, time of sabotage? Um, people mocking and talking about me. You know, they have made up lies about me. Get it. Because once you start putting yourself in the place of Jesus, that's when your power and your strength will come back, especially if you are not guilty. So here we go. Then Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the 12. So Judas was part of Jesus' entourage. And when you put yourself in Jesus' place, you want to say, what part of me allowed a devil into my life? Because if a devil is in um, Judas or entered in, um, the chances of uh, me manifesting this because I need a lesson to overcome um, maybe the past, the way that I was doing things and to change it are great, right? All right, so, and he went his way and communed with chief priests and captains how they might betray him. So Judas was hiding out. They were going and conspiring, talking with the priest and all about how they were going to take Jesus down. Now, anytime you're someone that has um, information that's going to change uh, lives or do something that's going to generate and um, compel lives um, for change, you're going to have betrayal come to you, right? And that's just one way to look at it. I don't want to get into the difference because I want to stay with this script. So they were plotting on him. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. So they, they paid Judas. Now, even though you, know, you have these Judases outside of you, always keep in mind of yourself betraying you. Maybe you weren't true to yourself about something. Maybe you put people before you because this is very important. Important to think outside of the box because nothing can happen unless you call the experience to yourself. And if you were um, put here to experience it, but with the power to change it, change it for what? Better. Let them see you rise. Because no one really believed and um, God, they were also very intimidated by the things that Jesus was doing. Is anybody intimidated by what you've done, how you've helped people? We ought to ask ourselves questions, go deep, all right? So, and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them and the absence of the multitude. So this is a betrayal that's been concocted in, but then you feel like Jesus and, you know, you're out there praying in the mountain and you're saying, God, nevertheless, take this cup from me. But if it's your will, let your will be done. So we see that the will of God is going to be done here in Jesus' life and some of ours. So what do we do afterwards? We keep thinking as Christ. 
because I'm wishing on a star. You know, my focus is not on all of the people that did all of this stuff. I got to overcome. Why? Because that's what I do, right? Come on. All right. So moving on into 22 of Luke. This is very important because we got a 21 day solstice. The day of the 21st of this month is coming up and people are not praying. They're worrying rather than praying, all right? Praying, all right? For what? Your dreams to come true as you deposit it into other people's lives. No matter what you gave, you are praying, all right? So here, then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. That is the way that they, you know, sacrifice lambs and so on and so forth. Well, the unleavened bread and the Passover, here's the sacrifice of the New Testament because they're getting ready to put the Christ up on uh, the cross. Please follow what I'm saying because people are the, uh, the atonement. The ones that follow Christ, they follow the star. They're following what is inside of them to get to the next part of life, to overcome the ill-mannered issues that we've gotten from our family or whatever we have to change. They, they're, following, they're following their intuition. They're following their gut. They're following God within them, okay? Go and prepare us to pass over and we, that we may eat. And 22 and 9 says, and they said unto him, meaning the tribe, the disciples, I call them the tribe because they was the crew. Um, will, where will thou that we prepare? Question mark. And he said unto them, behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall be a man who will meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Now I want to stop there because in my astrology class, what I've been teaching them is what many have said is taboo. And I'm going to get this point across because, you know, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. As it is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let me go back to as it is in heaven. All of these scriptures that we're speaking, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why are you in want when the Bible is telling you the direction to understanding, right? See, the mysteries, they open up for those that think outside of the box. Now, I'm not judging anybody and saying that you're wrong about how you do it, but nothing will manifest in your life if the word don't become one with you. As it is in heaven, right? The water bearer is in the sky. It is the Aquarian constellation. Please look it up. Because at this time, there is something happening in the heavens that is going to bring conclusions and blessings for people that didn't give up. You go and read or look, listen to Luke 20, 22 yourself. Just listen to it. And it's telling you what's going to play out for believers. I was watching Wonder Woman yesterday and the guy said she was getting ready to set straight. No, it was just as we. He says, who are you? She said, I'm a believer. And then she whooped on it. See, I'm a believer. Because when you counted me out, I got something that you ain't using. That's why you can't take me down. I've been following the star. And the star is leading us to and through betrayals because we got to come to know ourselves. It's a good thing. So thank you, right? Say thank you. But anyway, the water bearer is a sign of the times changing. And so the water bearer showed up earlier this year and it is back in connection with Saturn. Saturn, many people don't know, is connected to um, the Christ. And so we don't wanna get into that right now, but anywhere that you study Saturn and you find reaping and sowing and Jesus has spoke parables, it has to do with the 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 changes that have to come within you, which is planting and sowing to change um, who you are. If you have been a dog or a molester or someone that hurt people, you've been sowing in 
hurt and pain into people's lives, you're going to get that back because that is supposed to change you, right? And so when you change, you're going to start understanding the parables of the good sower. You're going to start sowing in good into people's lives. You see what I'm saying? And this is something that we all experience. So when you follow the star, you won't have no choice. You have a choice to make the changes when you're sowing negative because it's showing you the star is actually identifying what you need to do. All right, so go back to 22 of Luke and 10 and he says, he said unto them, behold, when you are entered into the city, there will be a man to meet you bearing a water pitcher. Now I said, where you will find the water pitcher. A lot of people said the city was here when they were teaching. The city of God is not in the sky, but it's within you. You find the understanding and you pray and meditate to connect with the star within you. That's why you following and, and many people following and they don't know what they following. It's not a man, Jeremiah said that you should follow. You gotta get some understanding from people, but the water bearer is giving the sign and the time at this time that we should be going into prayer because as Jesus was set up to be um, crucified, killed, the body on the cross was setting him up for a time of evolution in his spirit, which is what he came to give us, right? Now, I'm going to stop here because I'm going to say, you guys, I know, are going to go and listen to Luke 22 so you can get all of it. The whole thing, the whole picture, look at it and let the picture and the words come alive to you. I'm going to go over to Acts because I want to connect it because this water bearer, um, he says, the master saith unto thee, go um, to the good man. Where is the guest chamber? He will lead you to the guest chamber. Uh, where I shall eat the Passover with the disciples and he shall show you a large upper room furnished there. Make ready. Now I'm going to stop there because we know that in Acts, you don't go over to Acts. I don't want this to be too long. I want you to get it and you can always, you know, join in my classes or um, purchase the videos if you're not a part of my groups and my leadership um, groups. So in Acts 1, he says, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of that, that Jesus uh, began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had uh, given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by the infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. And this is a part of the Passover and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, within you, the kingdom of God is already there. It's established. Jesus said that. Go look in the book for it, all right? Um, one and four says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from J Jerusalem, Jerusalem, um, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So yeah, a lot of us have forgotten what the promise of the father was and even why you know you have went to church um you went to church and some people didn't get the church in them the church was supposed to come alive in you because that intuition and that truth within you is your guide through the corrections in life and what you need to establish to uh, go into your new life the promise everyone has talked about it in this bible uh, moses and Abraham, they've set us up. Um, yes, you understand what I'm saying. Jacob, um, they all, all of these people change, by the way. Okay. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, um, which saith he, you have heard of me. One and five says, for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So there's a baptism that's pouring out here because um, the water bearer is the one that's pouring out the spirit, okay? 
That's why we're praying. And that's why I'm telling you guys the connection within the heavens and within the earth is so important, right? Connecting with your star within you because ultimately you have been following the star, not to be a disaster, but to become the promise, to become everything that any prophecy was given to you and what you heard for yourself was ordained to be. This is a time for your vision to come alive from the Father, from the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let me read on connecting the water bearer with the upper chamber in Acts, where the power came. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father have put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall receive witnesses or shall be witnesses unto me um, both in, utter, in the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And this is visions, you know, uh, just get in the spirit. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in the apparel, which also said, you men of Galilee, you stand here gazing unto heaven. This Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into the heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from, um, then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount Olive, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room. The water bearer and the upper room. We all know that the upper room was stated for prayer. All of this right here is giving you power. All right. The connection with Luke 22 and 10 is so important because the great conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter is happening on the 21st. Um, the solstice, all of this, this week and all of our lives has been playing up to a time of re, um, re-evaluation to evolve from who we had been to who we are. You know, we've heard so many cliches concerning be your authentic self, but no one really had the true information on how to get there. And it's a process. Some people don't accept the process. They don't want to be a process, but this is what life is about. Why are you really here? Wake up out of the dream for those that believe that their money is the answer. Money does not give you power. You know, houses and cars, according to spirituality, it doesn't give you power. What gives you power is that star and that life within you coming alive so that you can live the authentic, balanced life between heaven and earth. Heaven and earth can't do anything unless it becomes one. And that means that people have to understand that the oneness is within them, the woman and the masculine part of them, the female and masculine. If you're not unified within yourself, we don't always have the problems that we did in the past, who we were uh, six months ago, what you were fighting with, the lack of understanding, you fighting with people outside of you, and you don't even know that these people conspiring is setting you up to learn lessons to overcome. This is Jesus' life. This is the life of the Christian that said they are believers. You know, I don't want to fight with nobody. I don't believe that the fight is outside of me. I believe that the fight is within me, but I had to come to an understanding that nothing could hurt me. Nothing. Because no matter what you go through, what you and I have went through, we're still here. Can we show gratitude? Can we also show gratitude to the words that we've studied spiritually and say, thank you. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because God will set a table before us in the presence of the, the doubters, the unbelievers. It's so sad to believe that people that hurt you actually are getting over. 
they can't get over when they have no love within them. What part are you teaching them, by the way? Think about that. I'm still here. I'm still standing. I was sent here for you to doubt the word of God. So I became the word of God, right? That's how I see it. Because as long as I have breath, I'm going to do this. I, I might go down, but baby, I'm going to rise. And then some other people that doubt it is going to rise. I believe that it still stands that you become an example. You let your light shine. You got to know your darkness in order to do that, though. You got to go over and deal with your own dark issues, your shadows. You got to find out what's in there. All right. So the connection between Luke 22 and Acts 1 is going to empower you because the great conjunction is coming together. And this is called the golden age. This is an ushering in of the golden age, enlightenment. A lot of people have woke up, a lot of people or in the process, because I always tell the people I work with, listen, I don't want you telling people that I'm awakened because there's so much that I woke up to yesterday and I woke up to today. And, you know, spirit said, go and teach on the great conjunction from the Bible. And so in order to see this, you're going to have to open your mind. Some people are going to see and they're going to say, well, OK, you know, I've been thinking along that level, you know. How in the world could you not accept something over your head, meaning the stars, when you accept everything in earth? You know, stop being one-sided and, and imbalanced, earthly. You're nothing but earthly. How can you be so earthly uh, good when you're no heavenly good? You know what I'm trying to say. The Bible says it. I mean, you can't serve um, one part of the world and not serve all of it. I mean, the, the heavens outside of us are unified. Let's get unified within the clouds. We see them. We also see the, the green grass. All of the earth is one. And you go from the earth and then you go into the stratosphere, into the universe, right? You accept this, but you won't study nothing up the heaven. You won't study it. Are you kidding me? Nobody could tell me not to. You know why? I'm not a fool. I'm foolish enough to follow the star within me, yep. I'm foolish enough to let go of all the earthly and material goods because I believe that there is a promise. And I believe that God can do better than any man. I believe that all that I've went through and all that I've seemingly lost was not just God. It was God showing me, I got something so much greater for you. Look at all the experiences that you had. Look at all of the people that you've met in your life. Use it for your benefit. but. Take this word in Luke 22 and Luke, um, yeah, read Luke 21 because you'll find um, the just judge there. But more than anything, connect the water bearer, the man that's pouring the water out. And the, the water is being poured out because the water signifies the Holy Spirit. Remember? Acts 1, read it and make the connection with the upper room and the man that would send them into the upper chamber. 22 uh, of Luke and Acts 1. You guys be blessed and remember, do not let go of wishing on your star. I love you um, until we meet again. Oh, I'm Kim. For those that don't know me, I'm Kim. Shining, we're shining, we're coming out. <laughs>